I'm with Ava again. Hi. Hi. Ava. Uh, you, you probably remember Ava. The um, Ava is a uh, psychotherapist in training, and a uh, not a chef in training, a chef. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Ava, what do you have? Uh, what do you have in store for us today? Well, today I want to make a frittata. Mm. So it's a fancy name for an egg dish mm -hmm. that is very simple to make. And um, if you have company, they'll be very impressed if you make a frittata. And um, yeah, it's once again a fun dish to make because it's got all these different textures you put in and oh. um, colors and involves a lot of creativity and spontaneity. That sounds great. So, and uh, so what do we have? Okay, well, um, today it's going to be a very basic frittata because mm -hmm. we're just trying to get down the frittata essence here. Okay. So, um, but you can definitely put almost anything you want in a frittata, provided that it has about the same cooking time. Okay. So, um, we'll go over that a little later. Okay. So, now the ingredients. Um, your basics, uh, I'm using organic eggs from the farmer's market. Mm. It's good to get them as fresh as possible because you really can taste the difference. Um, and it makes... Oh, it just makes a huge difference with the end product. So we've got eggs, and then we've got elephant garlic. Wow, and it's huge. Yes, it's beautiful, huge. Um, elephant garlic is a little bit more mild than regular garlic, and I just have fun um, chopping up elephant garlic. Okay. Uh, but you can definitely use small garlic, too. Okay. Um, it's just got a more mild taste, and it, and it sort of... Uh, instead of being spicy, it has more of the... If you can imagine garlic taste without as much spice, it brings that a little bit more into baked dishes. Okay. Um, I always forget the name of these type of onion, but uh -huh. I like the taste best of these. You can use any type of onion, but this mix it, these type of onions in particular with egg just go so well together. Okay. Um, then we've got radishes. Radishes. Um, uh, this is just a random thing I decided to put in, uh, just to add a little spice. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they're probably going to go bad within the next few days, so okay. I figured why not put them in the frittata. Sounds good. Um, kale, obviously because I you're, love kale and love, I like you're a lover of kale, <laughs> I yes. like to put it in everything. Yes. Um, and then black olives just from the can. Mm -hmm. um, nice big olives. And then another important part of making a frittata for me is putting in the olive oil. So here's um, the organic extra virgin olive oil unfiltered. Mm. Um, Really, when I use olive oil, I like to use unfiltered olive oil because it has such more of a full taste. And um, when you bake with it, uh -huh. it just rounds out the flavor a lot more. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and so frittatas, it's really important to, to use olive oil because of that, that specific taste. But okay. there are tons of people who use canola oil or butter or whatever. Okay. So okay. Uh, I think this is healthier, though. So, yeah, this is what we're going to use today. Oh, and then the um, um, nutritional yeast. So I'm not putting cheese in my frittata, and a lot of people do. Okay. Um, I prefer no cheese because less fat, less cholesterol. And I actually prefer the taste of nutritional yeast, the cheesy mm -hmm. taste of it. Um, it's known for having, like, a, the B complex in it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very good for you in that sense. However, because you are baking it, you will lose the majority of the B vitamins in the, the yeast, so it's mostly for taste. I see. Um, but it's used in a lot of vegan dishes. Obviously, this isn't vegan because of eggs. But mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's really good to add that cheesy taste. So um, sounds great. That's just what we're gonna use. So today. that's those are the ingredients. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's the first step, Ava? Um, well, the first step, uh, I'd say, just doing the prep work with the vegetables and the spices. So, okay. Okay. Um, that's what we're gonna do. Um, okay. And I'll show you a little, we'll show little bits of it. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Okay, hey, we're back. It's Ava okay. again. Okay, so we chopped up our vegetables. Yes, we and, did. And um, so we've got the onion and the garlic and the radishes and the olives and the kale. Mm. Um, I chose not to break them up that small because mm -hmm. I feel it's important to have texture in your frittata. Mm. Because the eggs are already going to be smooth and fluffy, you want to have, when you bite into it, you want little bits that you're chewing on. Um, that you recognize. Because if it's all pureed, it, you're not really getting the full experience. Yeah. So, um, you know, I didn't cut them very small. And okay. the garlic, too, when it's baked, will have a really creamy consistency um, and will keep a lot of its flavor, too. Hmm. So, um, yeah. And then you can also decide whether you want the stems or not for the frittata. 
Uh, I chose to keep some of the stems for the kale because that will also add like an extra taste and texture to it. Okay. Um, okay. And for any vegetables that you're going to put in yes. that you think might take longer to cook, um, it's important to make sure you cook them a little bit beforehand. So if you're someone who likes to steam vegetables, just put some away from leftovers and you can, you know, in a little container and you can stick them in your frittata the next day. Hmm. Um, or in the case with like, I don't know, for instance, sweet potatoes or hmm. just potatoes in general. If you steam them a little bit that day, right beforehand, you can just throw them in. One meal flowing into the mm -hmm. other next meal. Wow. So it's always, what's great about frittatas is leftovers can end up in your frittata, hmm. uh, provided there aren't too many spices and oils yeah. and stuff in your leftovers. But if I you see. have a lot of vegetables just lying around, you can just stick them just in the throw frittata. Just throw them right in. So it's really a creative process because you can choose whatever you want. Um, so, oh, that's great. So, you know, whatever's in your fridge, what you can make use of. Okay, so. that, that's not, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. So after you, ch you chop up the vegetables and stuff um, and you have them all ready, then it's a good idea to start preheating the oven to 350 degrees. Okay. And then to also start whipping up your eggs. Oh, okay. So okay. you don't want to whip up your eggs before you do the vegetables because you want the eggs to be freshly whipped. Hmm. And the longer they sit out after being whipped, the more um, the more they lose their oxidation, the more the, the oxygen leaves them. And they're not quite as fluffy when you cook them. Okay. So, so um, I guess now time. I'm going to uh, whip up... Let's whip up the eggs. Okay. okay. Let's, uh... So um, I selected um, six eggs. Actually, I think I'd probably use five for this because it's turning out to be a lot of vegetables I'm putting in. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to put them all in and I'll start whipping them up and I'll show you at the end product what the egg should look like so you have an idea of what's enough whipping. Sounds good.